at this point, um, I want to take some time because this is going to take a little bit more time is going through the produced data imports. Let me actually close this out and show you uh, the production with load file. So let's go back to our file room and find an example of this. And I know from knowing my data that final advanced IT folder is a production with a load file. And this is pretty typical of how these are gonna be produced, how like the structure of how it's gonna look. You'll probably see a data file sometimes, or a data folder, images folder, natives folder, text folder. This is what that structure is gonna look like. And it's not always gonna look like this. And the reason I say that is because maybe you don't, like it's, it's just all emails that they're producing to you, um, but they have a load, an accompanying load file. It will just have the text, the images, but they, there will be no need for natives. The natives, well, let's go into each one of these. The data is generally gonna be like a, a DAT or a CSV file. That's the actual load file. The images folder is gonna be each image page of those documents. So either, so like if it's a hundred page document, there would be a hundred different TIFF files. So it's either TIFF or JPEG format, depending on how it's produced. The natives folder is gonna contain like Word documents, Excel documents, those native or Excels or PowerPoints, so those native documents um, that maybe don't image all that well. I, I said Word, I probably wouldn't be Word. It would be like Excel or PowerPoint documents. And then text files, this is generally gonna represent how many folder or how many documents are gonna be imported because each text file represents that entire document as a whole. Um, so this is document one, this is document two, document three, well, I guess. Um, and so one of the things that I like to point out is when we do this import, although um, we see 44, one, seven, 40 documents, um, we're only gonna have 40 documents when it goes through that import process because it's gonna combine those images, you'll see that there's 44 images. And that's because some of these documents are not one page documents. They have multiple pages. But when the, it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna use that load file to combine the images into the documents that they're supposed to be, combine it with the text file, the OCR searchable text, and then also import the natives as well. Um, and assign all of that metadata to those documents when we go in there. And so one of the things I wanna point out here is in order for our system to recognize that this import is a produced data import with a load file, there are two key triggers. The triggers for the, multi, for the single mailbox was that there was either a zipped mbox or a zipped PST. Like once it sees that, and then that's what we're importing, it says, oh yeah, that's a single mailbox type of import. Um, if it sees multiple files, it's going to say, oh, this is a multiple files type of import. In this case, what we're looking for, our system is looking for the presence, the existence of a load file, DAT or CSV, which we can see we've got the CSV and we've got the DAT in here, and a folder entitled images. And so if you're ever getting a production that says image as the folder name, all you need to do to fix that, because when you go to click import from the um, parent folder, it will say, oh, this is a multiple files type of import. And you're like, no, that's not correct. This is a production with a load file. All you need to do to fix that is create a folder and title it images and click OK. You don't need to worry about having the images actually in that folder. It just needs to be there as a trigger to say, yes, all right, cool. We have the load file and we have a folder named images. This is a production with a load file. Let's go. Um, and so now we're ready to go and actually import and start that import process. So we go back to the parent folder, one layer up from where those documents are. We're going to go to final advanced IT and click import. And it should skip to, to step two. And it says, yep, this is a production with a load file. We've got the load file and we've got a folder called images. Um, tells us where this is coming from, from the file room within this database, final advanced IT. This is new. This is saying, which load file are we gonna to wanna to use? And so this is, if you have multiple load files, you're gonna to wanna to check and make sure that you're using the correct one. 
I personally just know that this is the correct one because I know this data. Um, but usually you only have one anyways, but if you have multiple, always good to check your data just to make sure that that's what you're actually wanting it to do. Um, batch name, I'm gonna say that this is coming from opposing counsel on 127.22. And I'm gonna create a folder with the same name just to get an organizational system, great. And again, we've got the deduplication and DNS detection toggled off based on it being a production with a load file type of import. So this is all pretty much the same as what we've done pre previous. Um, but now when I click next, instead of normally it would say import, now we take click on next and it's gonna take us to something new that we have not seen before. So this is just a summary of what we just went through. We can always go back or click edit and go and change anything if we need to. But I think that everything looks good. So let's keep on moving down to this new thing called our load file mapper. So maybe a good starting point is let's, let me duplicate this and go back to my file room and open up that load file that we're using and show you what it looks like. So you guys can know what I'm talking about when I say a map. I'm downloading this load file. This is what a load file looks like. And the reason I call it like a map of metadata. So what we're looking at is every column represents a metadata field. So we can see like subject title, um, some of these important ones, like these are unique identifiers for those documents. Saying this is where the baits start, baits end, Beg attach and attach. This is important for knowing if there are any attachments to those documents, like um, an email with a Word document as an attachment. The document type, subject title, recipients, produced page count, document date, email author, so on and so forth. You see all these different metadata fields for these documents, where mailbox path, stuff like that. Whereas each row represents a unique individual document. And so what this is doing is applying these metadata fields, uh, applying all of this metadata to those documents based on their unique identifiers. So when we import it, we know that this document is already getting this information printed on it so that when I run my searches, I can find how many documents are um, one page count. I can tell, I can run documents, a, a search for how many documents in this production were emails and things like that, or who they came from. Let's remember these metadata fields and now go back to the load file mapper. And I'm actually gonna move this over. We can see this, is, this first column is fields from your load file. This is literally taking those headers from columns A, B, C, D, E, F, bait start, baits end, beg attach, end attach, bait start, baits end, beg attach, end attach, document type, document type. It's just transposing them to go down as opposed to across. So this is what these are those headers that, that are coming from. So that's what this is. What we need to do is map these to our internal next point destination fields. This is what we're actually going to be using in next point to search things. And so depending on how people set up their load files, people can kind of set them up however they want, but we need to be able to tell what they mean by that. And so we're going to map them to our destination fields that we're actually going to use in next point. And you'll notice the first time you ever do this, most of these fields will be red and need to be validated. As you go through and uh, it's seen multiple of these, it will start to auto map them, but it's still good to double check and make sure that that's exact. That is indeed what you wanted to say. So let's say um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one for a second. What it says here, this is says recipients from um, the load file, but it could be something different depending on how they created it. It's, they could say two here, which makes sense. Like two is the recipients. It was who it was sent to. Um, but for our purposes, we would, if it did say two, we would probably want to map it to our recipients within next point, because that's what we would use to search. And it also makes less sense to say, who was this to? Um, and so 
I'm going to go ahead and what you can do is um, validate this by either selecting, typing in, oh, like recipients. Yep, I have that field. Or if you don't have that field and you need to create it, you can't really see it over here, but you see how my mouse goes from a black pointer over to a Mickey Mouse kind of glove. This is where you can add fields and you can go ahead and click on it and you could type in, okay, recipients and then hit create. You're almost always going to use free form when you're creating a field. Um, so don't mind this until we talk about custom fields, um, which we'll talk about um, in our session next week. But you can go ahead and hit create. It won't actually let me create this because that field's already been taken. Um, but you can create that field um, to map it within your next point database. And so I'm gonna go, go ahead and map this to recipients in here. And so just important to, to look at what it is that they're saying here and what we wanna map it to in next point here. Whereas this third column over here is a load file preview. These are the first three entries for that load file, um, rows two, three, and four, because row one is the header. But this is gonna be the first three entries for that header. And so this can be used to kind of identify, does this make sense? Um, document type being email, email, email. Subject title, Paul Kane resigns. Confirmation of interview on Friday, intercontinental exchange. Recipients, David, Deborah, Stephanie. Yes, this all makes sense to me. But if you looked at this and saw, okay, um, document date, 111. Email author, 2001, 11, 29, 2002, 206. Like that would be like, okay, there's something off here. This, none of this really makes sense. It's probably the load file is shifted one column off. And so then you can either make the choice to go back and correct and fix the, the load file yourself and then re-upload it. Or you can go back to opposing counsel and say, hey, you provided me with a janky load file, fix this and reproduce it, please. Um, so this is just kind of a QC measure to make sure that you know um, what you're looking at here. And then the last thing here is this column field status that says whether or not this has been um, auto mapped, user mapped, here's user mapped, um, auto mapped, or it needs to be validated. And so you can, you, what you're gonna need to do, you'll see that these ones that need to be validated, we'll go through real quickly. Um, these are ones that need to be validated no matter what each time. So this bait start is obviously very important as it is the unique identifier. And so we just need to make sure, okay, is this bait start, image range start, image file? In this case, it's bait start for the production with load file that they showed us. It, it differs based on the different load files that you get, but we're gonna go ahead and say, yep, yep, this is bait start and map it. So this is training. 00030, 0046, 0051, yep, bait start, baits end. So that has been validated. And then this is just asking, where is this coming from? And so this is where you just go ahead and map it back to that original path that we had looked at, that structure. So saying, where are these native files coming from? Oh, well, they're coming from the native files here. Where are the text files coming from? And this is pretty basic. This is coming from the text files right here. And then you hit use selected folder and then it validates those. And so once you go through and map all of these, you can either skip some. If you skip them, you're just gonna be losing that metadata. Um, but once you get all of these mapped, you are good to go to go ahead and hit import. The important thing that I wanna point out here before leaving this page is that you wanna make sure that you're mapping things consistently as you're importing into next point. And the reason I say that is because let's go back to that recipient and uh, two uh, here, that, that example that I was using. If half of the imports you map as recipients and half of them you map as two, when you run the searches on recipients, you're only gonna get half of the results that you're desiring. Um, same thing with two. You want to make sure that you are mapping them consistently. And so you might be asking, is there a way that I can know how these were mapped previously? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to go back over here into the file or data and then go to imports. 
and I can look back at my previous productions. So let me find one opposing counsel production. This is one I ran on the 18th of this month. I'm gonna click in here. And then over here underneath where it says it's within the file room, it shows me this field mapping report, which I can download and open up. And it shows me kind of just a legend of how, what I did last time. This is the field from the load file, and this is where you mapped it within NextPoint. And you can kind of use this as a cheat sheet as you're working your way through that load file mapper and saying, okay, this is, these are the fields that I'm using. And this can be very helpful for if you have multiple people importing within your database, but it also can be helpful if you just, it's been maybe a couple of months since you've received a production and you don't remember how you mapped it. This can be very helpful in that instance as well. And so I'm gonna go back here. Looks like everything is good to go. And then I would go ahead and hit import. And we are almost done. And by almost, I'd say like 95% of the way done with it now. All we need to do now is wait for this to finish processing. And then we need to run family linking. So if you recall, um, when we were going through that load file, there were those fields, beg, attach, and detach. We want to make sure that we are linking those documents together as a family so that any attachments to other documents, like to a parent email, are connected and so we can code them consistently. We don't have to do this for um, the other type of imports, the multiple files or the single mailbox type of imports. Once we hit import, we're good to go for those. With um, production with load files, we need to wait for this to finish processing. We see that it's working its way through. And then we need to um, run the family linking, which can be found right here. For the sake of timing, I'm not gonna wait for this to finish processing. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you on a previous batch. Let me go back to imports and go down to opposing counsel and show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click family link. In all likelihood, you, so it then prompts you to select what batch you want to do. And in all likelihood, it's gonna be the most recent batch, but since we can't do uh, this one yet, um, we're gonna go back to this one that we're currently in, which is right here, 118. Select the options. Generally, you're only gonna have the one option. Uh, based on the load file type. And for us, it's built in bait start, beg attach, family link documents, run family linking. And then that process has started and it will send you a push notification email when that process is finished. And then you are done. We are done with the production with load file. You are good to go to start reviewing it, setting it up, whatever it is that you need to do. We now have access to those documents.